Thanks so much for, for having me today. I'm excited to be here and to learn. I am in the WBEZ Southside Bureau, which is just a one woman shop, it's me. And my office is next to Brown Sugar Bakery, across the street from Limbs. These are very dangerous places. <laughs> Not because of the Yelp reviews that say, be careful, um, but because, you know, there, when I got back from maternity leave, I think I went to Brown Sugar three times in a week. Um, <laughs> and so I was happy to see Stephanie's picture, the owner, in um, your presentation. And so what my role is, um, it's not, like, I don't like to think in terms of just positive or negative, you know, as Professor Rhodes said, you know, we need alternative narr narratives, but I'm not here to be this savior for the South Side. It's to show balance and to show a variety of stories um, because there are, you know, issues that need to be investigated, but I also want to show slice of life. Um, but that often means I'm not covering community rubber chicken dinners <laughs> because that's not you know, the threshold of news for WBZ. Um, but we also don't cover violence in the traditional way. We don't um, do the roundups of who got shot over the weekend, who got killed last night. We try to take these issues, look at them more systemically, um, look at public safety. But um, I also want to just piggyback a little bit off of what Jane said as, as well. And what segregation does in this region as well as in this country, it creates the narratives it creates for black Chicagoans and black Americans. And I think they're two extremes. The one extreme is violence, poverty, low income, squalor. The other side is black exceptionalism, Oprah, Obama, um, professional athletes, actors. And what is invisible is what's in between. And those are black working class, middle class neighborhoods. And those are the ones that um, are really struggling, as Alden said, but there's also a lot of joy in, in these neighborhoods and a lot of mundane things, very pedestrian things like people going to work, going to school. Um, but it still is amazing that people believe that it is the wild, wild west on these corners and that it's completely unsafe. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what the problems are. Um, I think we also have to think about our communities in terms of assets and, and not deficits. Yeah. Yeah. The language that we use to describe our communities, vacancies, blight, emptiness, whereas in the suburbs that's called open space. <laughs> um, I also think that we, even though we're, we're having this, this population loss, I, I, I personally think, and there may be some who disagree, that I think that we have to move beyond density. The city as a whole has lost population. And there are places that have high density, um, pockets of downtown, pockets of the north side, the south loop. But a place like Washington Park, um, it's just not going to be the population it was in 1900, 1930, or even 1950. Lisa Lee is, um, used to run the Hull House Museum and is the graduate art department at UIC. And one thing that she told me is that we have to stop looking at art, food, and food and culture as the extras in a city. These are the things that make up a city. And so we have to just think about ways to promote our homegrown interest, uh, the food and the arts that are, that are in our neighborhood. Um, and I also want to say that there, there's room for, for everyone. Because of depopulation, people can, other people can move in or you know, some people have criticized the Aster, but it's like that was an empty bank. It didn't take anything away from anybody. <laughs> it was empty. Um, and then, you know, finally, we have these things like the Obama Presidential Center, the Whole Foods. Um, we see that retail attracts retail. There are these big moments that are happening on the on the South Side that can really be transformative. But there's small things too, um, like 75th Street where I work. You know, there's five loaves, so vegetarian, um, mad tacos. You know, what can be done to, to help that corridor thrive and, and to be a destination place? And then I see the work in, on block clubs. I don't have any empirical data on this, but I've never seen in a non-black neighborhood the signs that say, welcome to the 75th hundred block of Indiana, no car washing, no loitering, <laughs> no whatever. I, I've never seen that outside of Chicago and outside of a black neighborhood. And so there's collective efficacy that's going on mm -hmm. in these communities that is often overlooked. Um, and so I think that there's, you know, I joke that 
grocery store openings on the south side become news conferences <laughs> and, and they aren't, you know, in, in other parts of the area. But I think that we see a, a variety of things and there has to be a balance of the big box as well as the small businesses. Um, but, you know, there are plenty of people left in the, these communities who want to do well and want to stay, but also need the resources to make these communities vibrant.